Hello everyone. I am here sitting here about to start a game of Rome 2 Total War. Uh, this game released uh, last week. I believe September 3rd. Oh, no, about. Oh, it was probably two weeks ago. But, um. Came out. It was pretty much a disaster at launch from what I heard. Fortunately, I was not available at the time. I was celebrating my grandfather's birthday, and so I was. While everyone was complaining about this uh, awful buggy game, I was enjoying my time in Southern California. But uh, so by the time I got back and got to pick it up, it was uh, patched already, so I haven't had many issues playing the game. Um, and now I'm here at the second patch, and I figured now would probably be a really good time to show everyone a decent game, hopefully with no bugs or any errors. And it's still got a ways to go. The graphics are still not as great as they were as they were hyped over to be. There's still a few issues, I'm not really happy with a lot of the features, but the game is still fun, and we should probably have some fun watching it. So I'm going to play as the Romans, and uh, I'm going to play as the Junia, which is uh, Julius Caesar's house, because why not, it's historical. Uh, this game takes place uh, in 240 BC, or thereabouts, where uh, the founding of Rome. So we're actually only going to have very few provinces in Italy. And it's basically going to be at the beginning of the Roman Empire. So we're not going to start with a Roman Republic that's already been pretty much established. We are going to have to fight a couple other uh, people for the uh, Roman. You can see there's other factions here. We have Carthage, we have Eastern Empire, uh, Britannic tribes, Gaelic tribes, uh, successor kingdoms, Germanic tribes, and the Greek states, which are Sparta, Epirus, and Athens. Uh, my first campaign, I started off with Sparta, which is actually surprisingly a really good faction to learn the game with, because uh, it was very hard. It was supposed to be very hard. It wasn't as hard as they said it was going to be, but there was a lot of um, you had to really learn how to use your diplomacy and really learn how to be opportunistic to really um, to get the most out of that faction because they start out pretty pretty stripped down. Uh, but anyways, let's get started. So House of the Junia, and we're going to start our Roman campaign. Got some pretty good art here. That's what I like about the load screens. They always have some pretty cool art and flavor text, and sometimes they actually give you uh, tips on how to actually play the game, so that's always pretty good. Especially since it takes so long now <laughs> to get these games loaded up. I mean, the campaign map itself is huge. I'm going to show it to you in a minute, but that itself and all the details leads to this long load time for the for every game. So. I mean, sacrifices must be made, right? Alright, we're about to get started here. Any second now. There we go. You are at war with the Etruscan League. March north and capture their territories. This will allow you to consolidate Italia and ensure the safety of Rome. You must wage war if you hope to extend your dominion. Syracuse and Carthage own territory in Magna Graecia, so conflict with them is inevitable if you wish to expand across the Mediterranean. Otherwise, they may prove useful allies against Etruria or the Gaulish tribes to the north. Come what may, Rome will triumph. So as you can see, 272 BC, so a lot earlier than I thought. But this is basically the rise of Rome. I have my first objective, uh, completely control two provinces, either by direct ownership or through client states and military allies. Okay, so you have two options. We well, have three options when you conquer a capital city. Every This game is split up into uh, regions here. And... I'll show you on the, uh, if this would go. Okay, so this is Europe now, all and uh, all into Northern Africa and the Middle East, all the way, almost all the way into India. I believe that we got Pakistan and Afghanistan right here. But, um, so as you can see, everything is a province, or a region. So this is the region of Italia right now, right here, if I can zoom in on it. And, um, you have... See, it says province Italian region Arminium, which belongs to the Etruscans, which were obviously the first people in Italy before the Romans set, uh, settled in. 
and then we have and so once we what we're going to do is we own uh, Roma and Neapolis and we're going to and we're going to take Arminium and Velathri Velathri and that will be that will give us the entire um, province of Italia and we actually own the capital right now but um once we finish off these uh Etruscans like their last province it's going to give us an option to either just occupy their city um it's going to give you the option to uh subjugate them which if you subjugate them it automatically makes them a client state so they pretty much they lose all their diplomatic powers and but they're still kind of have their own sovereignty they can do their own thing but they must answer every call that I make to war or anything like that so that's pretty cool and you can see the Spartans are over here look at that and then we got Epirus so let's take let's plan our battle action right now so first of all we have to get our sovereignty of Rome of Italy that's rule number one to creating a good empire uh, our biggest issues right now are the Etruscans so we're gonna go up to the north secure northern border and we're gonna take over some Etruscans so let's go ahead see who what we're we dealing with here for battle. We've got a bunch of levies, which are not as good as Velites. They're like probably worse than that. We got a couple of Hastati here and a Legatus. All right, we have a fleet. All right, so let's start upgrading some stuff. We're gonna get a ship right so we can build our fleet. That's pretty good there. This is our money here, 1600 in current treasury. And our next turn, we're going to get 2,447. So we're going to be pretty good. So we should get... Let's see, where's that shrine? There's a really good shrine here that I like. Uh, this one. Maybe. Maybe it was... Uh... Yeah, I think it was Mars. But we... Well, we're going to get the Minerva because it gives us the 2% resource. Now, as a Roman Empire, military, militarily, they were the most disciplined empire in the world. So... What I like to do with technology is I like to start with their economy because their empire, their military is pretty, pretty disciplined. So we're going to start with uh, researching into economy so that we can actually afford these massive legions that we're going to be funneling in pretty soon. Um, so early in the game, pretty good. They're pretty easy to maneuver and, and do stuff with, with the little bit that they give us in the beginning. Um, here we actually recruit troops from the general now instead of at cities. So as you can see, we have the basic troop, which is the Hastati and the Veleti. So we really don't need to go into um, military technology quite so early. I mean, they had th this is the Hastati are the basic are Roman troop. They've been the basic Roman troop for pretty much the entire empire. So it's not like we're being gypped and we really need to rush into military tech so fast. So we're going to start with the economy so that we can get so we can get the buildings that we need to really spruce up our uh, our income here so that we can support larger armies. And then we'll start getting into the bonuses. Commander. But let's go ahead and get our spy How and take a look at what we got going on over here. As you command. All right, so we have a really small army here. Assistance. So basically, pretty much um, each part of this let's play that we're doing, I'm going to have one battle. So it's not going to be totally boring. At your command. This will be our first battle, and then I'll take over this province and. We'll see what else we can do before the end of my time limit here. To battle! All right, here's a new battle deployment screen. It's pretty cool. It's going to tell you what your uh, legion name is, which are co totally customizable. This is Legio II Apollinaris. Uh, it's the default name, but you can name it whatever you want. Against the Hammer of uh, Zephyrus. This is our Etruscan League. As you can see, it's going to be pretty lopsided, but just it will be fun to watch. Uh, 960 to 520. Let's see how these guys fare. We got uh, got their general and a couple spearmen, so we should be pretty good. Against the general whose horses are uh, Velites are going to take care of that, so let's go for it. Now, if you thought the uh, campaign map was really pretty, the battle maps are actually really, really, really nice. Uh, the vegetation, the trees, everything is really natural and lifelike. And I like the new, uh, some of the new battle systems like line of sight where you can't see where the army is going to be until your troops literally have eyes on them. So it's really cool, it really makes it interesting and offers a lot of opportunities for um, ambushes and, and tactics. I, I like it a lot. Um, other than that, there's a couple AI issues and collision detection issues. 
So hopefully they fix that with a second patch a little bit so that when we actually fight, it doesn't look like they're just joining a, a giant mosh pit and you can actually see some of the, uh, some of the battle, um, the motion capturing that they spent so much money on. Alright, so general speeches have been cut down to like two or three lines, which is a double-edged sword because some of the general speeches got really long and stupid. But I really like that feature, so you have orders, sir. let's see if we can uh, see some of that. Gods of our enemies, listen to me. I pledge you my victory today. Turn your backs on your unworthy followers and support our efforts. Be honored by us and know what honor means. Yay! What are they aiming? See, that cheer was that that speech was so lame his own troops didn't even cheer for him. Anyways, this is the new cinematic camera. I can actually offer um I can actually do uh I can, I can, it's pretty cool because I can be right here in the thick of the battle and I can control all these troops here without really having to get out of it. Um, the only, uh, only disadvantage of this is the, um, I lose tactical awareness so I can't actually watch all my troops that are going on. But it also gives a combat bonus to the people that you're, um, watching. I guess they like, they like being watched so they're gonna fight harder. But uh, that's really cool. So if someone's wavering and you know you're going to win, you can zoom in there and give them a little bit of a boost. It's not going to totally change. It, it'll give them a little bit of a boost. It'll help them from breaking. But it's not going to be so unbalanced that you can just zoom into wavering troops and they're no longer wavering. Riders on me. About face. About face. About face again. All right. Let's get on to the war. So here are our Etruscans over there. Looks like we got some eyes on them here. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, take our archers and we're going to move them up onto this hill here hopefully they don't try to stop so they're not archers I'm sorry my my uh, javelin men again carry over from uh, Shogun 2 we have uh, we have them running every time you try to give them a position I don't like that at all but what can you do Hastati. then I'm going to move these Hastati through the trees, kind of get as close as I can't want to get. Let right there. Not me. Run. General. And my general can go up there as well. Actually, I'm going to put my general. Hold spacebar, you can see where your troops are going to be. I'm going to put my general up on the hill as well so that they can charge into these guys. And we'll see how much how the AI has improved to see if you can see what my tactics are going to be. I love the sound design in this game. Listen to this. It sounds like it really sounds like an army on the move. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Way better than the predecessor, Rome 1. You can see they're hiding through the trees here. It's pretty cool. They actually, um, they talk to each other now. Like, each soldier is aware of each other and its enemy. Now the AI is, hasn't been as, as good as it's been hyped up to be, but they're patching it, it's getting better. But um, supposedly, they're supposed to really know what's going on between themselves, or each one is actually an individual person instead of just a group, which I think is really cool. And they talk to each other and they yell at each other, and then when they fight, um, it's supposed to they're supposed to meet up and fight in a well-disciplined rank. But so far, they've just kind of like spilled over each other and, and just moshed. Until, until one side runs away, but uh, hopefully they, they're uh, fixing that, and uh, we'll actually get a really cool looking battle when we get there. But, uh, come on, come on. You march like old women. Yeah, you march like old women. But uh, and it's cool we can make them run. Pretty sure the Etruscans saw them. Alright. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Etruscans have some people hiding in the trees because I'm pretty sure they had more than just these two units. So I'm pretty sure there's some Etruscans hiding in there. Or I just haven't laid eyes on the rest of the unit on the rest of their army yet, so I don't know. We'll see what's going on. But my army is coming along here. We can speed it up a little bit. 
No, I scared some woodland animals. Huh. That's cool. Javelinos. Boars? Boars, I would suppose. Javelinos are really in South America. Whatever. So yeah, pretty cool. Scared the animals. I guess that's kind of cool to, to think about if you're like playing the game. I never really thought about that, but if you're playing the game and you there's an army marching, you don't know where it is, I guess you can look for the animals running away. If you see the animals running away, there's probably troops coming at you. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's a neat little, uh, that is a neat little addition to the game. All right, so we're getting in on our, uh, see, I knew it. I had some people. All right, so we're getting in on, on the Etruscans here. They really haven't uh, reacted to uh, my march. They probably aren't exactly sure what I'm doing, but uh, I would probably have started some defenses, but oh well, first fight of the game, probably not going to uh, do it. We're going to get those horses taken out. Jupiter gives us strength. We're gonna take over. Fire on the enemy! The starting! Time to move in. Up, oh, they're moving. Time to move in. Let's go. Double time! Brave Romans to a man. These belly teeth gotta get really close belly to team. actually start throwing, which I think is retarded. There we go. Now we're throwing. Throw those spears. Get our body in there. Ready for orders. Advance! General! Oops. Our general is under attack! Fellow uh -oh. infantry at your command! General! Right. Get in there, General. Forward. Orders! Let's see if we can see some fighting. Alright, you see their horses are going in there. They're like, oh no, horses! Now my general is in the back there taking on his general. Oh look, we already got some scared people. Alright, so his general is already broken. Okay. The battle is turning in our favor. Okay. Let's get them from behind. Oh, looks like they already broke. And they are nope. Get them from behind, go! You guys, take care of these. Archers. Come over this hill and we're gonna smash right into them. Look at them running after my archers. They don't even know I'm coming, look at that. Oh yeah, you didn't see that, did you? Alright. Now they've turned around, so it's probably time to run back. Throw some spears in these bastards. Yeah, you didn't see that coming at all, did you? All right, let's bring these, let's bring these belly pigs over here back. And just grab their banner. Ready for all. I think they're fighting, but that's cool. We can bring them over here. Missiles ready and waiting. Fire on the enemy! The men are wavering. Our Velites over there got a little caught up, but it's okay. Got my general. They broke. Pastati! Forward! Missiles awaiting targets! Put some fire into that shot. Burn these uh javelins. Oh yeah, something on fire. Okay, so now they've got a taste of my belly pigs. They're gonna come after them now. General Run back, run back. They, ain't, they don't want my, they don't want Ah, oh, well, I lost general. That's embarrassing. I thought I was going to catch him from behind, didn't catch him from behind, oh well. Now they're running. There we go. And victory for me.
All right. Lost my general. Oh, well. Shit happens. Uh, pretty lopsided victory, though. I only lost 100, 100 people, and they lost pretty much their entire army. So that was a very decisive victory. Uh, but if you think about it, the Romans were pretty damn arrogant in the beginning of their empire. They lost a lot of generals because they weren't really... They weren't really, um, I think most of them were senators and, and politicians trying to make a name for themselves, so they weren't really tactical, they didn't really know tactics too well. Um, you didn't really get the best, greater generals until much later into the empire, the ones that eventually would become emperors. But, um, so, they did make a lot of mistakes in the early Roman Empire, and I really think it was kind of luck and just their well-disciplined force and good soldiering that got them as far as they did. Uh, because if you remember the first second and third Punic Wars, the Romans were pretty much getting their asses handed to them. And it was only until Scipio uh, finally got, uh, took charge that we finally got a real good Roman general to really show them what for. But anyways, so we can, uh, we got some captives here. We got 90 captured people. Uh, we can uh, release them, we can enslave them, or we can just kill them. Uh, we know like, how Roman likes their slaves, and in this game, slavery has as the economy, so we're going to put these people in chains and send them back to Rome. Alright, now I can get myself a new general. Uh, see, statesman? Candidate, candidate, candidate. All right. uh, I, this guy has good authority and uh, zeal, so we're going to take that guy and we're going to bring him in. Bam. Now that uh, this guy is out of the picture, we can move on to Velathri. We, we can take, take this, this settlement for Rome! We've got quite a big garrison, but I'm pretty sure we can win this battle if we're smarter than we were in the last battle. <laughs> uh, let's see, a couple spears, the mob, I'm not really interested in, those lovely slingers. These guys, really, I don't really consider the mob or the slingers a problem. Uh, my horse can uh, take care of those, while uh, and my velites can take care of those, while my histadi take on the spearmen. So let's take a look and see what we're going to be up against here. So I guess I got you two battles for uh, for uh, this session. Now, unlike in the other Total War games, not every city has a gigantic wall around it. Not every city can give you a gigantic wall. In fact, unlike other Total War games, you can't build roads and you can't build walls. So that's kind of a bummer. But as your cities expand and get better, the roads automatically become more advanced. Uh, so you really want to increase the uh, increase your uh, economy General. so that you can get Orders. so that you can get General. better roads. But only the provincial capitals uh, like Athens and Rome and and uh, Alexandria will have actual um, will have actual walls and uh, will only require siege defenses. So all of these cities here are going to be wide open and uh, the main objective is to catch this flag or destroy or route the entire armed force. So I like I always like to split up my forces here. I like to get my horses and a couple javelins back there so that when my main force walks through the mall here, you can see the promenade right there, um, these guys can come in from behind, take out any mobs or t and uh, really just kind of entrap the uh, enemy. So we're going to move our forces forward. We're going to start with a very typical Roman formation, which is just one long line of Histadi. Missile infantry ready. And our javelin men go in front. So that when they retreat, the people chasing them run right into my Roman formation. And my Mahistati won't have to run so far. Sorry, my uh, Melites won't have to run so far because they'll get stopped by my Roman formation. They can turn around and start throwing their javelins again. Very Sons typical Roman formation. So, I'm going to move these guys upwards. For the gods. At a march. Same here. I'm going to get my Heavies. archers here. Move them up. My commander. Forward. Jupiter gives us strength. And Roma in victor. Victorious Romans. 
Alright, as you can see... Look, the mob there. We got some mobs there. This is their uh, forward line. This is the one that they're really trying to use to prevent me from getting to their flag. But we're going to get that flag. So, I'm going to turn them around here. I'm going to put them right here. Get this guy. Oops, I didn't want them running. Stop running. Alright. Here come my Roman lines. Bam. Alright. Fresh troops. Fresh Roman troops. They're not very heavily armored yet. Nope. Now that the Histadi were pretty much plebs, just regular uh, Roman people. This was not. This was before the professional armies of Rome. Uh, so they pretty much brought their own gear uh, to fight. And uh, as you can see, uh, certain people have different armor, which kind of represents the like how much wealthier some certain individuals were than others. Like this guy right here, he's got some shoulder pads and better back better uh, chest armor. Probably has a little bit more money than the guy next to him who's just got those two squares on his back. So, that's kind of cool. Your belly days here are really poor people. These are like the super... These guys are probably made up of just the random squalor that wanted to be in the Empire. In fact, the Romans knew that they probably weren't the most brave and loyal, so they put these... Uh, skins on their head. They have to wear these skins. And these skins uh, show the Roman generals whether they were retreating or they were staying and fighting. So let's turn to fire. So that's basically, that's why they're wearing the coyote skins. Or the, I guess they're not really coyotes, probably just wolf. The wolf skins. But, um, we're gonna get our... See, their slingers are nothing. Not against the Roman. Not against the Roman. Get our javelin men up here. Put them right there. Should be able to get them. Uh, there's not a lot of room for me to maneuver. Alright, this is the. Oh, they're running. And my general. Get the general right here. Come on, Roman legions. It's pretty cool because as soon as they see slingers. They're going to put their shields up automatically. Automatically put their shields up. They're ready. And it looks like they're about to fight. Damn! Now's the time to run my general through. Because all that's left is the mob. And the mob has no... Oh wait, nope. They got spearmen up there. Never mind. I'm going to get my general up here anyways. But I'm going to get my spear levies. Or my um, my let my uh, javelin levies to hurry up and start throwing throwing uh, to the rear. Now they're going. Now they're going. Now they're going. Now the battle is turning in our favor. Now I can get my horses up here. Oh please don't tell me you went the. Oh come on! See I hate the pathfinding in this game. They really screwed up the pathfinding. <laughs> So I just wasted all this time getting them in this area, and I wanted them to go up here, but instead they decided to go all the way back around. Awesome. Fortunately, I've pretty much already dominated in this game, and uh, that tactic was going to be useless anyways, because, well, they're already running. My flaming javelins are uh, pretty much harassing them, and uh, putting up a pretty good fight. Oh, my guy's on fire. <laughs> he's got a javelin in his head, and he's on fire. And he's moving around for a guy who's got a javelin in his head. Alright, what else we got? Yeah, I'm a pretty brutal general. I'll be like, alright, everyone's getting fucked. My own men are, uh, I guess we can stop the javelin. <laughs> Go, guys. Move in, take the flag. Oh, we won. Victory. <laughs> okay, so high point of the battle, dude with a spear in his head on fire is uh, moving around a lot more than someone with a spear on his head should be moving. <laughs> Alright, so...
No, those are two battles. Our general lived this time, so he's probably going to level up. And uh, get a little, I guess, level up, but really he just well gets done. more traits. After your first battle, oh, you may count yourself a son of Mars. Alright, so here are our options. We can raise the city and just piss everybody off. We can loot the city, which takes all the money. But we're going to bring the heavy foot of imperial government on top of these people, and we're going to take the city for Rome. Your next Good news uh, indeed. As I thought, increase Your in rank. Your general has increased in rank. See? I know what's going down. Commander. So, I'm going to go in here. And uh, this is the legion detail, so there's traditions for each legion, which is really cool. Um, it tells you what uh, gives stats to the legion. So even if my entire legion is destroyed, um, for some reason or another, like let's say I'm going after Arminius and his Germans, uh, I can bring back that legion uh, for a price, and uh, it'll have its traditions. So that's pretty cool. Alright, he's not marrying, and uh, we're going to turn him into a commander. One authority. Good news. Jupiter has given your. So now we have Velothri, and we're going. And as you can see, they're they're already Roman, but or Italian, I should say. Uh, so we have the same culture. But once we start getting into the barbarians, they're going to have a lot of buildings that we can't use because they're cultural. So we're going to have to start converting them, and that costs a lot of money. Uh, I do want to expand eventually. Um, what happens if you expand and you don't actually build anything? It turns into slums, and then you got to pay money to destroy the slums and build the new building that you want to build. So we don't really have a lot of money to build anything right now. So I'm just going to um, end this right here. And that is turn one. Uh, as you can see, we now have three provinces in Italy, or three regions in the province of Italia. We need one more, and that will uh, secure uh, the Roman mainland for me, uh, 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 the Italian part. Then we can, uh, and I'll give you my grand strategy. We're going to um, solidify our hold on Italia. Then we're going to move down into uh, Sicily and Mar... Mar uh, where is it? Mara Gratia? What's that called? Magna. Magna Gratia. Magna Gratia. Um, we already have uh, Brundism and Cosentia, so that's nice. And we can move our next army into Sicily here. And uh, we're going to take care of the last of that. So that will solidify our hold on Italy. And then we can finally move into these islands here. And finish off the Etruscans. And I think they might have... Nope. And that'll finish off the Etruscans. And that will uh, secure Rome. Then, after we secure Rome, we're probably going to be at odds with Carthage. So we're probably going to have our first Punic War. And uh, once we deal with Carthage, we can move into Greece and uh, bring back some revenge for uh, the fall of Troy. Because apparently the Romans were the descendants of Trojans, so I don't know if that's completely true, but that is a historical uh, footnote there, that the Trojans uh, ran away and then settled in Rome. But uh, we, are, we are going to have a problem with Epirus. Uh, as you can see, it's led by Pyrrhus, and if you remember, Pyrrhus was the first of the Greeks to come and challenge Rome's authority, and he uh, lost. <laughs> and Well, actually, he won what was called a Pyrrhic victory, which means he won against the Romans, but he lost his entire army in doing so, and then he returned back to Greece and died in bed. Uh, not really, uh, as the Spartans would say, not the best way to uh, win a war, uh, or a battle. But that was basically the end of Greek dominance in the world at this point in time. So that's all for uh, this first session of the game. Thank you for joining me, and uh, we'll see you next time.